No! Brock stirred awake from the same old bloody nightmare he always had. No matter how many times he saw the same nightmare, relived that terrible day where his comrades were slaughtered around him in a desperate stand against the Legion, it never got any easier. If anything, it just got more painful. I'm a coward. I should have fought harder. No one fought harder, my old friend. The scouts saw you battle as they approached. You did your comrades, your people, as good a service as those who perished. Thor's words had been appreciated, but Brock certainly didn't believe them. But the orc then sat up in his cage and took a little look see around. Some one night elven onlookers were staring at him, pointing, marvelling at his ugliness. Arrogant creatures, Brox thought. The lot of them. Except for that one young female that had actually shown him some respect. She was nice. In her, Brox had sensed the power that his own people often talked about. The old ways of magic. She'd healed his wound with nothing but a prayer to the moon. Even honoured him with her blessing. But none of that would matter in the long run. His captors would no doubt soon decide how to execute him. Probably within the next night or so. And it wasn't going to be in a manner of his choosing. Not in some glorious battle. And that probably bothered the orc more than anything else. Great spirits, hear this unworthy one. Grant me one last struggle. One last cause. Let me be worthy. Meanwhile, Malfurion had spent three nights sat at home, alone, meditating on all that Cenarius had told him. And that had been an absolute waste of time, so he'd come to Soromar. To find some other voice some other mind with which he could discuss his inner dilemma. Specifically, he was looking for Tyrande. She was a little bit more level-headed than his twin brother was, and nicer to look at. But, as he neared the Temple of Elun, a bit of commotion caught his attention. A large contingent of riders, and leading them was Lord Catalos Ravencrest. Outside of the Highborn, Ravencrest was considered one of those with the most influence with the Queen. He would be a very good person to talk to about this current predicament. But, now was not a good opportunity to speak with the noble. Looked like he was on his way somewhere important. So, the young knight elf just went ahead and moved on. And soon enough, he entered the temple itself. May we help you, brother? I come seeking the novice priestess, Tyrande. She and I are good friends. My name is Malfurion Stormrage. <laughs> Tyrande shares chambers with myself and two others. I've seen you with her on occasion. Is it possible to speak with her? If she's finished with her meditation, then she should be free. I'll have someone ask. You may wait in the Chamber of the Moon. All right then. Malfurion made his way to said Chamber of the Moon. And after a period of anxious waiting, Malfurion. For a brief second, all of Malfurion's troubles and concerns vanished. For Tyrande was here, and she was brilliant. Are you okay? Has something happened? I'm fine. I hope I haven't intruded. You could never intrude upon me, Malfurion. I'm glad you've come, actually. I wanted to see you too. Both young night elves' face cheeks darkened. Tyrande, can we take a walk outside the temple? If that makes you more comfortable. You know how I said I've had some recurring dreams? I remember. I spoke with Cenarius about them. We took measures to understand why they keep repeating. And did you discover anything? I've progressed, Tyrande. Janaria showed me a path into the mind of the world itself. The Emerald Dream, he called it. But it was more than that. Through it, I was able to see the real world as I never have before. Tyrande paused, and Malfurion noted that she seemed somewhat distracted by a small crowd gathered in a nearby square. And what did you see? I saw Zinashari. And the well. Malfurion then went on to describe the unsettling scene he'd experienced, and Tyrande stared wordlessly at him clearly a little bit stunned, until finally, the Queen. Ashara, can you be certain? Not entirely. I didn't actually see inside. I just can't imagine how such madness could go on without her knowledge. It is true that Lord Xavius has great influence, but she would not stand by blindly. She must know the risks they take. I don't question you, Malfurion, but we need to know more. To claim that Ashara would put her subjects in danger, you have to tread lightly on this. I thought maybe I'd approach Lord Ravencrest on the subject. That might be wise. Again, Tyrande's eyes shifted towards the crowd. So Malfurion himself took a look 
to try and see what was distracting her so much. And then he saw it. A guarded cage with a creature inside that was not at all like a night elf. What is that? What I wanted to talk to you about, Malfurion. His name is Broxiga, and he's unlike any being I've ever heard or seen. I know your tale is important, but I want you to meet him as a favour for me. Malfurion nodded, so Taranda immediately led him towards the cage. Welcome again, sister. What news on him? Lord Ravencrest has assumed control of the situation. He's just head out to search the location of the arrest. See if there's any evidence of further incursions. When he returns, he's going to interrogate the prisoner personally. This time tomorrow, the prisoner will likely be transported to the cells of Blackrock Hold. Malfurion was slightly surprised that this guard was just blurting out this information freely. Something must have happened that made this bloke feel so much at ease around Taranda. This interrogation, what will it entail? Well, that would be whatever Lord Ravencrest decides, sister. Right. May we speak with him? For a moment, sister. Just speak so I can hear you, all right? And so, Taranda gestured to Malfurion and both knelt down. And immediately, Malfurion bit back a gasp of astonishment. Up close, this really was an amazing creature. Shaman. Broxica, are you okay? I'm fine. Just remember it. I've brought a friend with me. I'd like you to meet him. His name is Malfurion. If he's your friend, Shaman, then I'm on it. Hello, Broxigar. Broxigar's an orc, Malfurion. I've never heard of an orc before. <laughs> well, I've heard of night elves. You fought beside us against the Legion. But alliances fade in peace, it seems. Malfurion's brow furrowed. This orc's words made no sense. How did you come to be here, Broxigar? The orc then exhaled, stared intently at Taranda for a moment, and then explained how he'd come to be here. It was a fantastic tale, involving being swallowed by a wobbly distortion. A wrongness, the orc stated. A thing that should not be. And although the tale was ever so slightly hard to believe, Malfurion couldn't help but suspect that there might be some link between whatever the Highborn were up to and whatever the hell this orc was talking about. Malfurion, are you alright? I'm fine. Sister, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you and your companion to depart now. Captain will be back soon. I understand. However, as Taranda and Malfurion rose to their feet, Shaman, one last blessing, if you could grant it. So, Taranda went ahead and did that. She then bid farewell to the orc, and the two young night elves walked off. There must be something we can do. Once he's a Blackrook hold, I have every respect for Lord Ravencrest, but... Malfurion remained silent, only nodding. I spoke with Mother Diana, but she says there's nothing we can do but pray. Commended my sympathy, but suggested I just let matters take their course. Out of nowhere, Malfurion grasped Taranda's arm and pulled her into a little alleyway. We need to see Illidan. Illidan? Why? Because we're going to let matters take their course. With our guidance, that is. Meanwhile again... I have heard your pleas, and know your dreams. A world cleansed of the impure. I would grant your desire, you the first among my faithful. You will come to us then? You will come to our world and make it so? The way is not yet open. It must be strengthened, for it must be able to withstand my glorious entrance. Xavier's cursed himself. Of course, this poxy little night elf made portal would be far too feeble for a god. However, didn't even cross his mind why this supposed deity couldn't just perform the task himself. What do we do? I will send one of my lesser hosts to guide you. He may pass through to your world with effort, but you must prepare yourselves for his coming. And so, Xavius leapt to his feet and immediately started barking commands. Let no one stumble in their efforts. We are to be blessed with the presence of one of his favoured. Over the next bloody couple of days or something, the Highborn redoubled their efforts, drawing energy directly from the well to strengthen the portal. Until finally... It's just a bunch of dogs. Oh! Know that I am the servant of your god. Come to open the way for his host and his glorious self. 
I am the Hound Master. I am Hakar. 